Hey everyone, this is Justin from Who Is Like You Ministries, and I'm back with another video. Now before I begin, I apologize if I sound bad, I've been a little sick the past few days. And this week, I decided to do a video on what is the Jewish Oral Law. And along with that, I'm also going to talk about what the Dead Sea Scrolls are. So, what is the Oral Law? The Oral Law is believed by Orthodox, Ultra-Orthodox, and many other Jews to have been given to Moses by God on Mount Sinai at the same time he received the written law. It is also very important to know that these Jews consider the oral law just as divinely inspired as the written law, which is also called the Pentateuch or Torah. The oral law aims to apply the teachings of the Bible to all events of existence, to provide religious and moral standards for all of life's activities, and to realize the Bible's teachings in the whole Jewish community. A really great illustration of the Oral Law comes from Hillel, one of the most famous and influential rabbis ever. In the story, a Roman walks up to Hillel and says, I will accept Judaism on the basis of the written law. I believe that, but I will not accept the Oral Law. I cannot trust it, for maybe it is a mere invention. Hillel says, Very well. I will begin with the written law. I will give you now your first lesson. Here are your first letters of the alphabet. Aleph, Bet, Gimel, Dalet. Study these letters and then come back tomorrow and I will hear your lesson. The next day the Roman came back and Hillel said, Recite. And the Roman said, Aleph, Bet, Gimel, Dalet. And Hillel said, It should be Dalet, Gimel, Bet, Aleph. The Roman said, but yesterday you taught me Aleph Bet Gimel Dalet. And Hillel said, You are recalling my oral teaching of yesterday. You believed me when I taught you, so I believed my own teacher, and he believed his teacher. Originally, the elements of the oral law were developed and transmitted in the form of rabbinic commentaries on individual verses in the Torah. I'll start with the Mishnah since it was in development before the Talmud. Mishnah means the teaching and comes from the root shana, meaning to repeat, and then to teach. The Mishnah was in development for about five centuries, from approximately 300 BC to 200 AD. Because the commentaries became cumbersome, Yehuda HaNasi, who lived from 135 AD and died in 220 AD, created the Mishnah. He organized it into six categories called Sedarim, meaning orders, in 63 subsections called tractates. Like the regular Bible, these tractates are divided into chapters and verses, and each one of them is also called a Mishnah. Confusingly, the Mishnah can refer to either the whole work or individual verses. The six Sedarim are Zeraim, which means seeds, Moed, meaning holidays, Nashim, meaning women, Nezekin, which means damages, kodashim, which means hallowed things, and taharot, meaning ritual purity. Perke avot, or just avot, meaning ethics or sayings of the fathers, the most famous of all of the writings, is located in Nezekin, although some scholars speculate that it used to be included in the last Sedarim. Perke avot gives a great explanation of how the oral law came to be in the very first verse in that book. It reads, Moses received the Torah at Sinai and handed it on to Joshua, Joshua to the elders, and elders to prophets, and prophets handed it on to the men of the great assembly. They said three things, be prudent in judgment, rise up many disciples, make a fence around the Torah. It is imperative to understand that in the sight of the rabbis, making a fence around the Torah is neither bad nor evil. It is placed there to keep the sacred mitzvot of the Torah from being broken. Rabbi Leonard Kravitz gives a great example of this in his commentary on Perke Avot. He says, quote, For example, the Torah forbade the eating of leaven from the first day of the festival of Passover. Rabbinic Judaism understood the day to begin at evening. Since it might seem that leaven could be eaten until the onset of nightfall, all eating was prohibited from the middle of the afternoon. To protect the original prohibition even further, the eating of the leaven was prohibited from 10 a.m. on. The Talmud 
meaning study or learning, consists of a law code and a commentary to that law code. Like I mentioned earlier, the code is the Mishnah. The commentary is called the Gemara, which was completed around 600 AD. It is organized around the laws of the Mishnah and contains compositions devoted to the Tanakh's law and theology, which explain or amplify passages. To put it simply, the Mishnah plus the Gemara equals the Talmud. As Jacob Neusner puts it, quote, the Mishnah presents laws and is about life, while the Gemara analyzes laws and is about the Mishnah. Now the Gemara's analytical, argumentative commentary on the Mishnah's law emphasizes applied reason and practical logic, explains the regular and the routine rules of conduct and conviction, and harmonizes cases where different laws seem to conflict in principle. Its discussions cover the protracted age from Moses to Sinai to the 7th century of the Common Era, thus drawing on nearly two millennia of Judaic culture, lived out in both the land of Israel and in Babylonia. It is important to know that there are actually two Talmuds, the Babylonian Talmud and the Jerusalem Talmud. The Jerusalem Talmud was completed during the time of the Roman Empire, circa 400 AD, while the Babylonian Talmud was completed in the Iranian Empire, circa 600 AD. Out of the two Talmuds, the Babylonian Talmud, or Talmud Bavli, is the one used by Rabbinic Judaism. You may be familiar with Jesus and his disciples' confrontations with the Pharisees and other Jewish leaders, and how Jesus often comments on their traditions. When Jesus talks about this, he is speaking of the developing traditions that now make up the Talmud. I already gave you one example of a Jewish halakha earlier. Another example is the ritual of washing your hands. It begins with a specific jug that fills certain requirements and specifications. This jug is filled with water and then placed in the left hand and used to pour water over the right hand. Then, the jug is passed to the right hand and water is poured over the left hand. The process is repeated a second time and then sometimes even a third time. At the end, a blessing must be recited. The blessing in Hebrew reads, Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Asher Kitshanu Bamitzvotayv Vatsivanu Al Natilat Yadayim. This blessing translates to Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe, who has made us holy through his commandments and has commanded us about washing hands. Lastly, what are the Dead Sea Scrolls? I thought I would add these to this video because it was thought to have been written by a Jewish group called the Essenes during the time that the Mishnah was also being developed. I was lucky enough to actually get to see many of these manuscripts in person when the Denver Museum of Nature and Science did an expo on the Dead Sea Scrolls. I got to go see various scrolls from Genesis to Isaiah to scrolls about the Bar Kokhba revolt, scrolls from the Book of Enoch, and more. I also got to see scrolls written in Biblical Hebrew Paleo-Hebrew, Aramaic, and Greek. I was able to see the exhibit twice, and some of the scrolls are never going to be seen again in North America. They went back to Jerusalem, were locked back into the vault. It was an amazing experience. I wish I was able to take pictures, but they would not even let us have phones in the gallery, so it would have been pretty tough. Plus, I definitely didn't want to get thrown out. Anyway, the Dead Sea Scrolls were first discovered throughout the years of 1947 to 1961, in caves near the Dead Sea, where they get their name, in a place called Qumran. They are thought to have been written from 250 BC to 70 AD. There are around 40,000 fragments that come from 600 to 1,000 scrolls. 200 of these are Old Testament. They predate the next oldest extant manuscripts by 800 to 1,000 years. Most of these scrolls read like the Masoretic text, but some follow the Septuagint or Samaritan Pentateuch. The majority of the texts are written on leather made from animal skin. Some are on papyri, and one, interestingly, is written on copper. This one is called 3Q15. A couple of fun facts for everyone. John the Baptist from the New Testament is thought to be by many scholars to have been an Essene. Also, the Pharisees, the group thought to be the strictest with the Jewish laws, were actually insulted in the Dead Sea Scrolls by the Essenes. They are called seekers after smooth things because the Essenes thought they were too lenient with the Torah. Well, thank you all for watching this video. 
I hope you liked it, and if you do, please hit the like button to let me know, and also subscribe if you want to see more content like this. If you guys want me to, I can definitely go through more Jewish rituals, prayers, traditions, and more. Thank you all for watching, and have a great day.